Hey, Andre, can you believe that there's a new Toyota Tundra that's about to hit the dealerships? Well, I can't believe it because it's been a long time coming. Like 500 years or something? Only 14. Okay. <laughs> and the greatest thing is that Toyota was kind enough to actually let us spend, I think, what, four days behind the wheel, three days behind the wheel. Uh, so in this video slash podcast, we're going to be talking about not just everything you ever want to know about the Tundra, but more importantly, how does it compare to the competition? And I'm talking F-150, I'm talking Ram, I'm talking Nissan, Andre. And Chevy. And of course, I'm talking Chevy. And GMC. So yeah, it's time for us to take a little step back, right? Because... Uh, we have a lot of videos on TFL Truck and some on TFL Now and other channels uh, digging into some of the specs on the Tundra. But now we have we can talk about all the specs that we know and also uh, how it compares. Uh, I cannot wait because, you know, dealers, you know, remember that leak? Yeah. That came out months ago. Yeah, with the orange truck? The orange the truck meeting. leaked at the yeah. dealer meeting. And uh, somebody said, you know, the new Tundra is going to be a world beater and it's going to be this, you know, really really special truck well now we can we know exactly what it is yeah i think um there's one bit of information that you all want us to talk about that we can't and that of course is it's water fording <laughs> no, <laughs> no, i'm kidding <laughs> let's <laughs> test it let's put it in some water no, no, i'm of course talking about its pricing and uh, the fact is i don't think toyota has actually even uh, settled on pricing. I don't think they have it. So the best we can do is tell you that Toyota told us that the pricing will be available at the end of October. Mm -hmm. uh, we can take a guess at it, right? We can kind of take a guess. Usually what's been happening, Andre, is what, what, does, the, what does the truck start at? You've got the, well, you had the SR up there for a second. Yeah, I'll, I'll show it to you guys uh, one in a second here uh, because the Tundra SR is going to be the base truck as it is now. And uh, Toyota actually released images and a lot of specifications on this truck. Uh, you can kind of see me see it behind me here, uh, but it's their base model. It's a two-wheel drive. It's available either in a shorter cab or a longer crew cab, um, short bed or long bed. Um, you have different options. Currently, the Tundra starts at around thirty-four to thirty-five grand. Um, we think, or at least this is our guess. This is my guess that the next generation twenty twenty-two Tundra SR, the base truck, will have a very similar starting price. It makes sense, right? Yeah. What manufacturers have been doing is they start. The lower models or the base models at about the same point, but then the delta or the amount of increase <laughs> increases as you get into the higher end models. So with obviously with Toyota, it's SR, SR5, Limited, Platinum, 1794, and TRD Pro. Uh, and so so while the base truck may be close to that thirty thousand dollar price tag, I think when you get up to the TRD Pro, which by the way won't be available in the hybrid version until like March of next year, that's probably more likely a fifty five to sixty thousand truck. That's my guess, but I think that's a fair guess. Yeah, and once again, you know, exact pricing will come out. Toyota is still negotiating that price, they said, internally and also with partners. So I'm sure they're, you know, counting every penny, every dollar. Yeah, and before we get to uh, the competition, the other question that everybody has for us, which we can now spill the beans on, is the fuel economy and water fording. No, nobody <laughs> cares about water fording. Yes. <laughs> What's the fuel economy, Andre? So, dude, so I was looking forward to this, yep. finding out the uh, fuel efficiency, because uh, that's kind of where the dealership leak uh, may have been hinting in my mind, right? You know, it's going to be a very special truck with a twin turbocharged engine. But uh, when the numbers came out, and this is Toyota's estimate, EPA is still confirming this uh, with them. Uh, for two-wheel drive Tundra, this is non-hybrid. The hybrid numbers are not around yet, not available. For the two-wheel drive Tundra, it's 18 city, 23 highway, and 20 combined. And for a four-wheel drive, it's 17 city, 22 highway, and 19 combined. What does it sound like to you? That sounds like about every other full-size truck yes. out there. <laughs> it doesn't sound any higher. Uh, how does that compare to the old uh, V8 5.7 liter that was in the it's old truck? It's a huge improvement over the old truck. So if we go four-wheel drive for four-wheel drive on the Tundra, the old V8 with a six-speed automatic was rated at 13 city, 17 highway, and 14 combined. So they improved it by five. Dude. Yeah, that's a big improvement. That's, that's like 25%? That's, that's huge, yeah, yes. 30% improvement? improvement yeah yeah so generation for generation it's a huge leap yeah but once again like you said these numbers the 22 uh, highway and 19 combined it's basically 
where the other four-wheel drive trucks in the class are. Yeah, it's like, I mean, it's pretty much where, like, the Ford F-150 with the 27 would be. I think the 3.5 is a little bit thirstier, maybe. Uh, actually, it matches the 3.5. Does, it? Does yeah. it match the 3.5? Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, you've got the Chevy with the, you know, the either the 5.3 or the 6.2. It matches uh, the 5.3. Uh, Ram with the Hemi, 7. Matches the Hemi. All right. And then <laughs> you've got Nissan with their, what do they have now in the, under the hood? They've got well, the they have the Endurance, the 5.6. Yeah. yeah. How much is that? Same thing? Same. Wow. So there you go. They basically caught up to where the competition was. Yes. But considering that Toyota is very slow and methodical in changing their trucks, competition may move on within a year or two, right? Yeah. And I think so. You, go ahead. Yeah. So where... I'm a little worried for well, Toyota. Well, here. hold on here, Andre. I mean, you do have the hybrid still coming. Yes. Uh, now that the Ford hybrid isn't much. I mean, the Ford hybrid that you own actually is like one MPG more. Well, 24 combined. Yeah. Okay, which is so, uh, which is actually considerably more. But whether you see it in the real life, it's yeah. not a story. And speaking of real life, you did an MPG test on the vehicle you were driving. What did you get? So I drove the Tundra. It was a limited kind of mid grade yeah. uh, for Toyota Tundra. It was a non hybrid. And I got just barely under 20 MPG. And this was mostly highway and I would say 80% highway speeds, like 65 to 70, and also some city. Yeah, so pretty much a little bit less than they were but estimating. A little bit less than the estimate, mm-hmm. uh, but I kind of hit the average. So 19 is the combined number. Yep. I got almost 20 in my real world. And this is after about 200 miles of driving. Look, look I, I don't want to sound like we're, you know, whining about the fuel economy. Let's face it, a full-size truck getting, you know, double digits is really good. 20 MPG. Uh, back in the day, that would have been unheard of. I, I think... Uh, because it's Toyota and, you know, they were the first to come out with the hybrid synergy drive, right? We're expecting big things from them. So maybe maybe it's a quick case of expectations versus reality. But nevertheless, 20 MPG is, is pretty freaking phenomenal for a full-size truck. Yeah, and, re- you know, when I got the truck in Texas, this was San Antonio for the first drive event. I got into it, and thank you, Toyota, by the way. They provided a truck for us, for me. Uh, a little bit earlier yeah. uh, before the other people. Thank you, born. Josh. You know, we owe you one. Yeah, thank you, Josh and Toyota. And it had 27 miles on the odometer. Wow. So so this truck was not broken in at all. And I was driving it, you know, fairly Fresh gently. from the factory it in was, San Antonio. Yeah, it, it was born right there the day prior. And then I drove it. So it was very special. Uh, so 20 for a brand new engine. You know, it's not broken in yet. So that could be okay. Did you have to put some nappies on it? Was it... Was it, no, it was, cool. was it was it brand new? So was, it, was it was it crying a lot? No, no? it wasn't crying. It was a fairly smooth ride. Smooth was it hairy ride. or did it have a bald head? You're well, going somewhere <laughs> weird. Well, it, was, it was a brand new truck. Well, yeah, but it's it's just fresh. It had that fresh scent. It had that new truck smell. Huh? Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, so now that we've gotten the two things that everybody is curious about, which is of course. Uh, how much will it cost, and fuel economy. Yeah. Uh, the other things we should talk about, let's just kind of quickly run over the truck so that in case you uh, haven't watched any of our videos, by the way, they're all available as, as are Andre's stories at tfl-studios.com. It's a little mobile app you can put on your phone and you can get all those news stories, videos, even this podcast, and that way you'll always be in the loop mm-hmm. because we make a promise. You saw it first on TFL. But let's talk about... Let's talk about the basic numbers. So obviously, you probably know this. They went from a V8 to a twin-turbo V6. Uh, yep. And horsepower, if I recall, is 437. Did I remember that right? Uh, that's for the hybrid, yeah. For the hybrid? Yeah, 437, which is higher than the F-150 hybrid. Yep. And for the hybrid, the torque is 583, wow, that's which is higher than the Ford, yep. once again. So they went all out on the hybrid. And we also drove it. Uh, you and I drove the TRD Pro. Uh, that was really cool. We also have 0 to 60s. Uh, numbers from Texas. Um, so this is not quite sea level, but it's low elevations nonetheless. And one thing I noted about that hybrid versus the non hybrid is just it seems like, you know, the engine is pulling you, and then there's like an invisible hand of electricity pushing you. Yeah, the, the cool thing is they actually said it can go on highway speeds if you're not, you know, floored uh, in all electric mode. It's a 1.87 kilowatt hour battery, which is more than the Ford, which is 1.5. 1.50 kilowatt hour battery. Yeah. Uh, and so you can go in all electric mode. We didn't experience that ourselves, but apparently it's doable. The cool, the other cool thing is it's got a little gauge that shows you how much uh, battery you have left, which is 
pretty funky. Now, 1.87, you know, it's not like a Tesla, which would be 100, you know, a Tesla would be basically 100 kilowatt hours. If it All was electric, Like yes. a plaid, yeah. So we're, we're, we're far from being very electrified. Yeah, and so it, this is not a plug-in. No. So the engine or your regen braking, right, regenerates energy um, and for the battery. And the motor is kind of sandwiched in between the engine and the transmission in a classic kind of Toyota hybrid sort of way. And it sounds like an F-150 system because that's what an F-150 architecture basically is. They also have a three and a half liter twin turbo V6. They also have a sandwiched electric motor between the engine and the transmission. And they also, like you said, have a hybrid. So the, the only surprising feature that was missing compared to the Ford, if we're, if we're talking now hybrid to hybrid, right? Uh, was, of course, the fact that it didn't have the big inverter. It only has a, it, an optional 400 amp plug. 400 is, watt. Yeah. Watt, sorry, 400 watt, which is basically good enough to power, like, uh, I don't know, like... A couple lights couple here lights, in the studio. couple maybe, lights, maybe charge an uh, electric drill, but you're not going to power, like, a vacuum cleaner or any kind of serious Coffee power maker. tool. Coffee maker. Yeah, whereas the Ford or has tools. Yeah. the Ford has in the in your hybrid 7.2 kilowatt hours. That's a big ass battery. You, you can charge an electric car with that. Yeah, 7.2 kilowatts of inverter has been useful. You know, I actually used it yesterday. What'd you use it for? Um, so uh, there's a snowstorm coming. The first snowstorm of the season you here. Have, you have a charge up snowblower? <laughs> no. Do you charge it up with your truck? No, I, I have a large compressor. You know, the compressor that stands up almost my height. Why do you have that? For? Uh, I, I was blowing out sprinkler systems. Oh, nice. So, so yeah, because I was worried about my sprinkler system I for gotta the long. I got to do that, dude. Oh, do you want to borrow my compressor? Yeah. yeah and my borrow. truck? <laughs> do I have to use a truck? Or no, you, no, you no. Just charge up the compressor and let me, let me go ahead. So, it. Um, I, so it just so happened that the compressor was laying, you know, I, I mounted it inside the bed. I tied it down. Um, and then instead of taking it out in and out of the truck bed, I just plugged it into my F-150, powered the compressor, and blew out the sprinkler system. It's funny. Like, there are two things that always, like, scream fall to me. You know, obviously Halloween, right? Uh, and trick-or-treating yeah. and, you know, everybody putting up their decorations. And then the sound of sprinklers being blown out. <laughs> <laughs> right? There's that. <laughs> it's like, oh, fall is here. <laughs> In the neighborhood, the ringing of, of, of air compressors and the hissing of sprinklers. <laughs> well, that's cool that you were able to do that. Yeah. And to put it in perspective... Um, we can actually get more complicated. So right now we have the new Ford F-150 Tremor. Yes. Uh, also, in our, we're testing it, and we're going to get you know a bunch of videos done with that. So stay tuned for those. Uh, what did you do with it yesterday, Andre? Where did you so, take it? So we took it to the Ironclads Trail, oh, which is a fairly you? difficult trail here in Colorado. Did you, did you compare it to something? Uh, I compared uh, my FX4 F-150, that, the one we're talking about, to the new Tremor because I really wanted to see how does you know what did Ford do? How did they improve on the FX4 exactly, and what capability you have? So that's an off-road video. Yeah, I was I saw that thing. It's like this really cool dark blue. I think it's called um, antimatter. Antimatter. It's yes. a really cool name. It's a dark dark blue. It's almost black. And then they got uh, the yellow tremor on the side, and of course, it's kind of these yellow embossed. Uh, Seats, seats with tremor. and tow hooks are orange. Tow hooks are yellow, and then yeah. there's some gold in there. It's just a badass truck. And I, I, I was like, wow, that is a cool truck. And then I hated to ask how much it costs, and the answer was <laughs> was what I feared. How much is the Tremor that we have there? How much is it, Andre? So the Tremor F-150 we have has every option other than the sunroof, and it's $68,000. Wow. So it's got the 3.5. It's got all the bells and whistles, including, you know, all the fun all things. All the luxury, all the technology. Uh, yes. The question that immediately then comes to my mind is, why not just get a Raptor? Exactly. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Because the Raptor starts at 65. Yeah. And the, so the Tremor has, you know, uh, the 33s, right? Yeah. And you're, ro you're rolling on like maybe like a one inch. It's like a, it's like a maybe slight lift. One uh, inch lift. Yeah. yeah. And one inch wider. Yeah. And yeah. dual exhaust. But just at that point, go for a Raptor because you're going to get more horsepower. You're going to get more more suspension and you're going to get the r word but that's not clear cut like that because the tremor f-150 and by the way we'll switch to tundra in a second but the f-150 tremor starts at 51. so if you don't want to, if you cannot find that raptor because those are you know marked up or whatever and they're hard to yeah, find i think they're also going to mark the tremor up and they might mark yeah, up the Tremor, too. That's, that's um, really and the Tremor is using Raptor parts. So the transfer case is from the Raptor and the Tremor. The front torsion differential is from a Raptor. So I think this Tremor is kind of special, too. 
Yeah, I think it's cool. I think it's, you know, if you could find one that's not $68,000, that doesn't compete head to head with the Raptor, I'd say go for it. If you can find one like in the 55 range, I'd, I'd jump Just on it. Jump on it. Yes. Yeah, jump on it. Because there's, comp- there's nothing that compares to it, Andre. Well, you know what will compare to the it? The new ZR2. Well, or maybe this TRD Pro. You know, TRD, yeah. Pro, TRD Pro is running on 33s. The Tremor is on 33s. The new ZR2 Silverado is running on 33s. Um, so let's let's talk about that. That's a really good point. Yeah. So so let's let's take the the, the Star Truck, which is of course the TRD Pro that we drove. There was one. There was one. <laughs> I don't think they had like well, they had like twenty Tundras and they had one TRD Pro. Yeah. It was white and the videos up on uh, TFL Truck. Uh, no off road. Off road. Yeah. Off road. And um, let's talk about where it kind of stacks up in the world of the competition. So let's, let's, let's not talk about the other ones because those are cool, but let's talk about the, the Star Truck. Um, so TRD Pro rolls on 33s. Uh, it's got uh, Fox One suspension. Left. Yeah, it's got Fox 2.5 inch shocks. Shocks, yeah. Not active. Not active. So I think a direct comparison to that would be the Rebel. Yeah, or the Tremor, this, this truck we just or discussed. The Tremor or the FX4. I would say Tremor. Okay. Be- right. Here's here's why. Right, here. be- because the FX4 and you know as I found out yesterday while comparing FX4 to the Tremor, the FX4 truck just doesn't have as much clearance. Okay. It just doesn't. It does has it has no lift, has uh, smaller tires. The tires are not as aggressive, and the new TRD Pro. Tundra and the TRD off-road Tundras have a rear locker now. All right, all right. So, so now we've got, now I think that's so fair. So right now okay. we've got TRD Pro versus Tremor versus Rebel. Versus, versus Trail Boss. Versus Trail Boss? I think so. Yeah? Yeah. And versus Pro 4X, Nissan Pro 4X. Exactly. But the Trail Boss, you see, so the Trail Boss will be, you know, now is superseded by the ZR2. So yes. the ZR2 is coming. It's not around yet. No. It's going to launch in 2022. ZR2 is a little bit more capable than the Trail Boss. Trail Boss will still exist, uh, but the ZR2 Silverado will have front and rear lockers, both two lockers, and which t- is kind of unique in the segment. And the Tundra does have a rear locker, but not a front locker. Exactly. So Finally. I think it may be between the Trail Boss and the ZR2. It's going to be in that area. Dude, we're going to have to do a comp. We're going to have to do like if we can get the ultimate. If we can get the manufacturers to, to let us play. Uh, we'll have to put them all together and do a do a comparison and probably go to Moab for that one. That would be we're, incredible. We're about to get snowed out here in Colorado. Uh, we've been, I think, doing the last couple off-road videos before it really gets snowy. It's supposed to snow today and then supposed to be like seven, eight inches up in the mountains. So uh, snow and off-roading, guys. Uh, especially serious off-roading, don't mix. You can do yeah, it, but we, we like playing in the snow. We but, like playing it, but but yeah, it but just playing, playing, not not like seriously off-roading because you will. Get stuck and you will. Well, it's it's more than roll getting off stuck, a mountain. right? <laughs> it's rolling sideways. That's off what's scary. Yeah, yeah. I've seen last couple of years ago we got invited with the Land Rover group when we still had the LR3 to go uh, like this time of year, and I was like, Tommy, uh, I don't think it's a good idea. And he was like, Yeah, let's not do it. And sure enough, they uh, they rolled in a disco. Uh, luckily, nobody was That's hurt, but not fun. But, but the vehicle was not uh, better for it. All right, so so we've got we've pretty much established the baseline. Um, so let's talk about power. Uh, if we're talking power, the Toyota wins. Well, yeah. Well, the hybrid just yeah. wins across the board. I yeah. mean, the only horsepower advantage that it doesn't have is the Raptor and the TRX. I mean, those are the two trucks but that they're, are they're still in, above they're it. Different category. Yeah, they're still above it. Or, but or the uh, new Hummer EV. That's way above it. That's like a hyper truck. If the yeah. Raptor is, you know, like the, like the ultimate truck, and the Raptor R is a super truck, and the TRX is a super truck. The, I just drove the uh, Hummer EV. That's got to be the hyper truck of the bunch. Uh, it's just 1,000 horsepower, <laughs> 1,250 pounds foot of torque. It's, it's mind-blowingly powerful. Yeah, so that's a whole different ball game. And so the hybrid Tundra has a lot of power. We still don't have the efficiency, like we said. The base uh, twin-turbo engine, the V6 in the Tundra, also has decent power, 389 horsepower. Which is not quite as much as the Ford, right? The Ford has 400 horsepower in that in that category, and 479 pound-feet of torque. Once again, a little bit lower than the Ford EcoBoost, but still, those numbers are better, like the V8s from I know, GM. I, I was just thinking, you know, that that GM V8, which we used to consider the 
Godzilla of engines, right? 420 horsepower, 460 pound foot of torque. Now seems, uh, I hate to use this word, lacking, Andre. Yeah, because these twin turbocharged lacking. engines, <laughs> these twin turbocharged engines are having more torque down low. But it does you know? sound better than, than, yes. than the twin turbos. Yes. If you want to hear them, we're, you know, go to TFL Studios on TikTok. Go to uh, any of our off-road videos. Uh, yeah, it, 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 you know, the, the one lacking area is not uh, necessarily the number of cylinders, but it is the audible uh, way that the truck um, kind of doesn't tug at your heartstrings. <laughs> and also the new Tundra does have some sound augmentation. Like, I don't think we got to talk to, too much to the engineers about this, mm. uh, but I noticed it. It's Did you thing. notice it? Yeah, too? it's a thing, yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, just augments, you know, when you're accelerating, it, it kind of generates some more engine noises uh, for you in the cabin. And by the way, the cabin is quiet. It is quiet. Yeah, very, very quiet. They improved the sound insulation. It's very quiet, very comfortable, coil rear suspension. Hold on, you're, you're jumping ahead. Okay. I, I've got a whole plan here, Andre. Okay. I've got a whole, we, we got to move. We just talked about engines. Yes. So we got to talk about transmissions next. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, so obviously going down from the front of the truck to the back of the truck, we'll, that's how I'm kind of working my way. So it does have the new 10 speed. Which yes. puts it up there with Chevy and with Ford. And Ford, yep. Uh, but uh, it does trump uh, Nissan uh, and it does trump and Ram. Ram, yeah. in a way. Yeah, Ram's well, got 8-speed. Yeah, what does that mean? I mean, is one better than the other? Well, so the new 9-speed in the uh, Titan yep. is pretty good. The 8-speeds uh, in the uh, Ram trucks... Are pretty good. They're pretty good. Yeah. And they've been around for years, years and years and years. What's the uh, axle ratio on the Toyota? It's a 331. Yeah, which is uh, normally like you'd be like, oh, but then when you've got 10 other gears that you can play with, it gives you a really broad uh, axle, you know, broad ratio of gears to get you both down low power and uh, up high fuel efficiency. Yeah, I think it's a good combination. Mm -hmm. um, well, the fuel efficiency is on par with the others. The acceleration, well, we haven't drag raced it yet. Uh, we did 0 to 60 times, and you will also be able to see that on TFL Truck Channel. Um, actually, uh, that video, I think, comes out the same time this audio podcast comes out. Yeah, I out. put it up. We have a new uh, uh, little vertical video channel called TFL Shorts on YouTube. I put it up there, 6.68. Yeah. I'm just, that, you know, that's what Yeah, so is. between 6 and 7 second range. People in the comments were, I can read you the comments. You want to read the, you want to see what people think of that? Is this on this little clip? Yeah, it's on the little clip. I'll okay. read you the comments. Yeah. Hold on. I'll tell you what people are saying about uh, that. I, w I thought it was decent. People thought we were not at uh, sea level, but we were. Uh, well, because we're, we were, about, Texas. we're about like 1,400 feet above sea level. All right. So let's see here. It's got uh, a bunch of, sounds like a UPS truck. <laughs> Geez, my Ooh. 2018 Ram 2500 6.4 with a few mods can hit 0 to 60 in sec 6 seconds. Um, let me keep going. I, I think people were disappointed. Wow. So not any quicker than the old truck. I'm sure this number will get worked down through more testing. I was expecting under six. Uh, not a great launch. That's your fault, dude. Yes. So uh, I, I, That's not fair. Uh, you, well, you launched as well as we could, so given we the amount of time we had, which was well, zero. We didn't have a good, uh, actually, test um uh, actually place location no we, yeah we, we, yeah it was a side road like like just you know, we had literally four hours with the truck and we ourselves. drove almost 200 miles yeah we drove 200 miles uh, <laughs> to do our off-road video because uh, texas texas for being like you know like texans and cowboys the largest state the lar no well not Alaska. the largest yeah there is no off-road in texas unfortunately it's, it's private land it's all yeah here in colorado it's all blm land and we've got tons of off-roading texas guys Trying to find, we had to go to a park to shoot our video, and then we, you know, hunted and searched for a straight road. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sounds like crap. Do it again. Uh, get a draggy. Got a draggy. There's no way the pedal was to the floor. Lousy launch. Terrible launch. Oh god. MPG. Question. 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 Another slow Toyota. Anyway, uh, let's let's talk about what happened when we did the zero to sixty with the. Uh, with the uh, towing the trailers. Now we we did unfortunately we did not have apples to apples because Toyota provided an Airstream and then what was the other one called? There was some uh, Sierra or something. It was like the Gulfstream trailers. Gulfstream, yeah. It was, it, but it, there were two different trailers, and the, the, we knew how much how much did the Airstream weigh? 
Uh, 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 well, it could have weighed up to 7,600 pounds. And that the, was the maximum weight of the trailer. And then the sticker on the, on the other one, the Gulfstream, was torn off. Was tore off, so we didn't know how much it weighed. But we did bring our solo DL, and we did, Andre did a 0 to 60 on both. And tell him what happened. So it was pretty, I was impressed because. Oh, I should, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but I should set this up. So the new truck was towing the Airstream, which is a little bit heavier. And the old truck was towing the kind of the boxy square the, stream, the older golf stream, whatever it was <laughs> called. So one was, you know, round and aerodynamic and heavier, and one was boxier and mystery and, and terms less of weight. weight. They were yeah. about the same length. Yeah. So we're yeah. guessing they were about the same. Uh, hilariously, um, Probably not for Toyota. Uh, the, the guys told us they weigh twelve thousand, and me and I, you know each. And yes. me and Andre looked at each other, and we're like, "We're like, that's no, not twelve. <laughs> no." And you look at the axles on the trailer, you're like, "No, those axles won't hold that weight." No. And it's just there's no way. So Andre, being you know the thorough scientist, I, I pulled out was, my CDL. Yeah, and pulled said, out guys, <laughs> Trump with a CDL card, went and looked at the sticker, and he's like, "How come the sticker says seven thousand? Where's the 12? We're like, "Whoops! I don't oops. see a one or a two. I see a seven. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. Anyway, so so we then we towed with them, and then we went scouting for a flat piece of land that you know that allowed us to get to sixty, and we found it. And what was the difference between the old and the new truck? It was about like one point two seconds. So quicker. the new truck was quicker. Yeah, and it was hauling, like you said, a slightly heavier trailer. That's our estimate uh, about what was happening. And this wasn't the hybrid. This was the base, uh, not the base, but the standard twin turbo V six. Um, and I was impressed because let's say it did a seven second zero to 60, right? And our towing zero to 60 was around 13. So it was less than double uh, the time, which to me says uh, there's really good performance because we've done a lot of testing here. It's um, a mile above sea level. And usually with a heavy trailer, you're at least double your acceleration times. It just slows you down that much. And this wasn't slowed down that much. So that was uh, pretty impressive. And I got to tell you, you know, jumping from the old one to the new one, there's a huge difference in terms of quality, in terms of design. The old one just seems really dated now. The thing I love the most is the new one has kind of this flat area where you can rest your hand, um, doing the kind of have my hand out the window kind of thing. It's really comfy. The old one is just kind of a little waterfall there. Uh, much nicer plastics. They're not as hard. Uh, much more modern kind of design. That screen is a, what, 12-inch screen, I believe? Is Four, it, 14! 14, 14. 14. Inch screen. Wow, that's yes. pretty impressive. Yes. Uh, just the controls still, you know, are uh, big, so you can use them in gloves. And there are hard buttons around the screen, so you don't have to, you know, go virtual for everything, like turning on the cameras or shifting it from too high to four. Or even high. controlling your HVAC, right? Yeah. That's what's cool. Yeah, the only disappointment for me was I didn't see a four auto, you know, and you may be wondering why. A lot of the comp competitors have four auto, like uh, the Ram has four auto. Does Ford have four auto? Yeah, Ford yeah, has four yeah, auto. Yeah, so, so you can be in two high or four high. The problem is if you're on pavement in four high, you will start to crab. Uh, so uh, with four auto, it, it basically allows you to like go from dry pavement. Let's say it's starting to snow and there's dry areas and there's snowy areas. You don't have to worry about it. You have to like keep switching back and forth. Um, so it, it, it's a nice feature. For whatever reason, Toyota didn't have it. And it had this little T-shifter, which was pretty cool. But to, to be fair, we were driving uh, pre-production vehicles. Yeah, absolutely. And we did have a hard time switching it from four low, low to, four, to too high. <laughs> yeah, like like we've done with the Tacomas, right? Yeah, yeah. It seems a little finicky. Like it, you need to move it back and forth, back and forth. Um, maybe they will just correct some of those things. But I think Toyota is always, it, they're going after reliability, durability. And when they launched the truck, and this was in Dallas or um, area, you know, the couple of weeks prior, yeah, I was there at Plano. Uh, in, in Plano. And uh, Mike Spears, the chief engineer for all trucks at Toyota, held two chains. I don't know if you remember that, but and this was transfer case chains that control, you know, roll over the gears. And the Tundra chain was wider than, he said, the competition. So he wanted bigger components, heavier components to be durable. And I don't know if that makes it, you know, it makes it that they cannot use automatic mode. I'm not sure exactly what was the thinking there that they don't have four auto. Yeah, uh, and we did have two trucks where it was kind of struggling to get out of four high. No, four low, four low. In, in yeah. the four high. Uh, and uh, before we keep going on our comparison, Andre, does it have a transmission cooler? Yes. 
<laughs> the engineer showed it to me. <laughs> That's a big deal for towing, especially. Well, yeah. So the towing came up, right? So it used to be about ten thousand pounds on the old Tundra. Now it's twelve thousand. So it's not less leading, right? Because others, Ford and GM and others, have higher numbers technically. Uh, still, I, I'm pretty happy with that number. You know, if you're towing twelve thousand, maybe you should need a heavy duty truck, right? Yeah, I wouldn't. Tow, um, I wouldn't. I really wouldn't tow more than ten with a full size a half ton. I think it's. It's the tail wagging the dog. E- even if it's rated, I know Ford is rated at almost 14 yes. on some of their vehicles. I just think it's too much weight. It's just it feels like the truck is struggling. E- either not necessarily accelerating. All the trucks now are powerful enough. It's when it comes to braking and and turning and yeah. turning and yeah. or going downhill. That's where it gets a little terrifying with that yeah. much weight. So 12,000 number is a good number in my opinion. So they raised that. And the payload came up a little bit to about 1,940 pounds. That's the maximum rating on a two-wheel drive truck. Um, so they did good. Um, you know, they improved it. Oh, yeah. 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 And then let's talk about the configurations before we get down to the suspension and tires. That's coming. Uh, so what are the configurations now? What, how can you get one? So this, we didn't get a chance to drive the SR, the base truck, but they did have pictures. They shared pictures of it. Um, it's the silver truck. Uh, if you're watching this, you could see it. Uh, it's got a blacked out grill. It's got smaller steel wheel, what appear to be steel wheels, I think, um, and smaller tires. It's very, very simple. That's the SR. That's the most affordable truck. And, and each of the truck's um, models has a different nose. Different so, grill design. Different grill yeah, design. Yeah. yeah, they're specific to if you get a SR5 is different if you get an SR, different if you get a limited. And some are like blacked out and some are chromed out depending on, you know, do you want like the city truck or do you want the country truck or do you want the off-road truck? Totally. And this is what's interesting, dude. And um, they derated the engine for only this SR, the base model. So the engine has a different power output in their spec sheet for the SR than the other, all the other Tundras. Yeah. So about 348 horsepower and 405 pound-feet of torque. We thought that was maybe for fuel economy reasons, for yeah. like corporate so, averages. So that was my first thought. Yeah. My second thought it was, it was maybe it's for reliability. Didn't we ask the guy? Yeah, we did. Oh, what did he say? And it, I don't know. I wasn't engineer. really satisfied with the answer. What he said answer? something like, because we wanted the basic truck to be simple oh, and have as much torque as the old V8, oh, which yeah. is true. They did that, but but why change the rating on it? It was very it wasn't very clear. Yeah, I feel like I feel like you shouldn't be penal. There's two things that that, that 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 did kind of strike a raw nerve, right? The first one was that that they derated the base truck, and the second one was they had this really clever feature where inside the um, driver's side uh, tail light on the side, there's a button, and you push it, it pops the uh, tailgate. Mm-hmm. And the idea is that if you're like walking with a load of potatoes. <laughs> as I would. <laughs> as Andre would. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and, you, and you don't have a finger or a hand, you can just yeah. use your elbow and, and drop the tailgate. Yeah. Which is, you know, a work truck thing. But yeah. but, but it's not it's available. It's not available on a work truck. Yeah, I know. They're only putting it on like limited and higher. It must cost money. Bec- but come on, Toyota. It's just a switch. It's you cool, but come on. Give it, to, give it to the working guy and gal. You know what many fact, and none of them have done this. None of them have done this. Remember, uh, we had Toe Piglet on the show, yeah. on our podcast. Yeah, I remember. And Toe Piglet uh, actually proposed, uh, this was one of his ideas too, is manufacturers need to create like a, um, I don't know, a hot shot package. Yeah, that'd be cool. Right? So it's a base truck like this that's affordable, but it has to have LED lights, which are very, very powerful, right? Because you need to be able to see at night. It has to have a very comfortable seat because you're spending eight hours or 10 hours a day in the seat, right? And also give them features like this, you know, easy opening tailgate or, you know, whatever the features are. Uh, I almost forgot one thing, Andre. What? Before we move on uh, to the suspension and tires, uh, we need to talk about engine choices. So uh, the TRD Pro (sighs) only comes in the hybrid, right? Yes. So you can only get it as a hybrid. That's Uh, why it's delayed until a little bit later. The Ford Tremor only comes with the 3.5. Yes. So you can't get any other choices. But if you're looking and comparing just a regular F-150, there are many more choices. 3.527, Coyote. Uh, 3.3 base three, engine. 3.3 three. diesel. Which diesel was discontinued. Engine, yeah. So. And high output uh, engines. Yeah. With a Raptor, 
That's true. And also Chevy has a plethora of engines. So Chevy has yeah. five, three, six, two, uh, two, seven turbo, two, two, seven little baby turbo. It's got the straight six, three liter. So a lot more engines. Nissan, one engine. Yes. Um, just a big old V8. Ram? And two engines. Well, three, really, or yeah. four. Well, okay, so, so they have a five, Pentastar. seven, Pentastar, which you don't want to get in the truck, trust me. <laughs> uh, you got the diesel, the yes. Eco diesel. Uh, and what's the fourth one? What and, the, and the Hemi with E-Torque, okay. which they just made as a free option. All right, so there you go. Those are the <laughs> engine choices. So Toyota's kind of on the, on, on the shallow end of the pool in terms of engine choices. Yeah, and... And that must be the, the, one of their strategies. Maybe something else will come in the future. Who knows? Maybe the plug-in hybrid or something else. Well, Ford um, the Lightning too. So that's, uh, that's another e one. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and I talked to Mike Spears once again, and he said um, he's a proponent of diesel engines. Yep. He likes diesel engines. He said the certification for U.S. government was just too steep. Mm. You know, it would take them three years of time, and they really didn't want to wait. Uh, that long to certify an engine. So that was one of his comments. And Chevy is also introducing an electric Silverado at CES this year, so they've got an electric option as well. Yeah. So Toyota, <laughs> you, so got, you got some work to do there. You got some homework. You've got them explaining to do. No, and the other explaining thing in the front is the tow hooks and the lack thereof. Yeah, on the I, was so, I was like, you know, I was like, guys, how can you have a TRD Pro without any recovery points? You know, no recovery hooks in the front and only one in the back, which is a tow hitch, which is sketchy, right? I, and so the front, they said, is because it's got this active arrow. These spoilers come down and the tow hook would get in the way of it. And I was like, okay, I'm sure other vehicles have that, which they do, and they figured it out. The Ram has it. Yeah. Ford has it. Yeah. Uh, so, and they said, well, we we'll always listen to our customers. And I was like... I was like, well, then you, you might as well not go into production without those because <laughs> you'll be adding it next year for sure. And then I was reading uh, the comments again, yeah. uh, and everybody was like not happy about the lack of tow you know, You know what it is, Andre? It's like a sports car with a spoiler. You may not need the spoiler, but it says it's a sports car. Yeah. You may not need the recovery hooks, but that's one of the like things that screams off-roader. Uh, or truck, period. <laughs> or truck. Yeah. But let's face it, you know, we do a lot of off-roading, and recovery hooks are really good. Whether you want to get towed out or you want to help somebody, it's really nice to have. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I don't get it, dude. I do not get it. And you said that there might be, like, you think it's an aftermarket opportunity? I think it's a huge opportunity. Uh, you know, I'm going to be at SEMA. Uh, I'm planning to go to SEMA this November. And I'm, I'm expecting to see either a solution already or maybe somebody's working on it because, you know, that section below the fog lamps in the bumper of the Tundra, uh, that lower section is plastic and there is almost nothing behind it. Uh, well, I, at least that's what my uh, take I, I, is. I'm going to say something. Kind of, you could have lived without that light bar in the TRD Pro, but you can't live without recovery hooks. I mean, uh, the light bar is cool. It's got this light bar in yeah. the grill, uh, but... Uh, yeah, I would have gone with, if given the choice between the two, I would have gone with the recovery hooks. And they can't be expensive, right? It can't be a lot of money to like weld or bolt. Or to put them through hooks. the cover, through the bumper, right? Yeah, I, was, I was looking at the old one and it has them, yeah. right? They're hidden underneath. It has right. them. I was like, oh, that one's got them. Right. Uh, all right. So let's talk uh, suspension. Uh, so Toyota does this kind of, and I said weird, maybe it's not weird, but their base models have uh, Bilstein. Uh, the TRD off roads, yes. And then the TRD Pros have Fox, not yes. active. Right. But I was looking at the uh, Tremor, it doesn't have Fox or Bilstein. They're, they're, right. they're, like, they're just like black shocks that Ford builds, I think. They're black shocks that, with the letters that say Tremor. Okay. So it's, and actually, I had an opportunity. I asked Ford, uh, marketing and engineering team, I said, how come you didn't use Bilstein or Fox or any, any number of other? you know, name brand, um, premium shock manufacturers. Uh, they basically said uh, that they felt that their tuning was good and also they were mindful of the cost. Mm. The, so they were really trying to nail down and nail down the, the ride and also the cost. And that makes sense because the Tremor starts at 51. So maybe it's working for Ford. So for the first time ever, now they got rid of the leaf uh, springs in the rear and they got coils, but then again, Ram has had coils for a long time, Andre. <laughs> as long as I can remember. Well, yeah, not but, that long. But Ram has had coils. Uh, what does uh, Nissan have? Uh, Nissan has uh, Leafs. Okay. Uh, GM uses Leafs yep. still quite, a, quite heavily. Um, and then now, so Ram is going to coils. 
uh, has been on coils for a long time. Toyota's, Toyota's going, going, going to coils. coils, and then the new Raptor went to coils. Yeah. So that's going to work a, its way down. There's a trend, yeah. right? So I'm seeing a trend there, obviously. So I think more and more manufacturers will see some benefits. And I asked the Ford engineers uh, about the Raptor. Why did you switch from leaves to coils? And they basically said uh, leaves are fine, but uh, what coils give you is like a little bit more contact with the with the with the earth. And when you do that, uh, when you can uh, kind of ground the axle, no matter what the terrain is doing you get better traction, you get better acceleration. So that's what they said. And then you could also get uh, airbags as a little way of kind of leveling the back of the truck if you're you know, carrying that 1,900 pounds of payload or if you've got a heavy trailer. Uh, that's an option too, which is always nice. And then yeah. the uh, fuel tank, who's got the largest? You used to have 36, now it's 32. Uh, they no, went the, down. so Toyota was largest at thirty eight. Oh, thirty eight! Wow, that, that was their uh, that so was their the, previous. Job. But I think Ford, you can still do thirty six. Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, you I, can. I think Ram has an optional thirty three. Thirty three. Yeah. yeah. That's How about TRX. Chevy? How about Chevy? What's oh, Chevy's using small tanks. Yeah, like they're 26. twenty six. They're between twenty four and twenty eight. Yeah, some, yeah, yeah. And and I think this is the trade off. You know, GM uh, thinks, and that's why they did it, is better fuel efficiency. You don't have to carry as much fuel, right? So because uh, when you're carrying fuel tank, huge fuel tanks, that's an added weight in your truck, and they're trying to remove as much weight as possible. Now, this this is the one area where I, I feel like the truck is certainly um, looking odd, uh, and that is the tire size. Uh, 33s on the TRD Pro, it really needs 35s. And uh, that um, Tremor out there has 33s as well, Andre? Yeah, it does. Uh, and the uh, Rebel has 33s. Yes. Uh, the Trail Boss has 33s. 30, 32s. 32s, yeah, yeah. even smaller. Good yeah. God. Yeah. Nissan has 33s? No, 32s. Uh, 32s, yeah. all yeah. right. Uh, so, so, so 33 is okay. Like we said, if you want to compete against the Tremor, it's, first of all, visually it looks a little small. They look weird, yeah, they look yeah. small. Yeah, but if you want to go and compete against the Raptors, you you gotta have a bigger tire. Well, it's not just for looks; it's also for clearance. You know, you can air down a little bit more and have a lot of more contact patch on your tire off road. Um, so it's for all those things. It would be useful. And um, I know that uh, uh, the problem is today, thirty sevens are becoming the new thirty fives. So like the Hummer EV comes with thirty fives. The Ford can come with thirty fives. The new Raptor. Right, 35s or 37s. Exactly. Uh, you can fit 37s on the Hummer EV with no modifications. Problem. No, just slap them on there. Yeah. Uh, and so you know, when you're kind of from the factory of 37s, 33s or 32s seem, and maybe maybe the manufacturers figure, hey, we'll just let the owners do that. Uh, well, yeah, I think fuel efficiency has to do a lot with it. Turning big tires is yeah. hard. Yeah. And if you look at uh, fuel efficiency regulations now or ratings. And noise, they're noisy. And noisy. Um, if you look at the uh, latest EPA numbers, uh, all the like trucks like the Trail Boss, the Tremor, the Pro 4X, Nissan, even potentially the new TRD Pro will have their unique ratings because they're lower than the actual other trucks. All right. Let's keep moving on and comparing. Uh, so uh, the next one, which is becoming kind of a warlike situation is tailgates, right? Uh, so they did add a kind of a cool feature, like I said, the little button on the side that that, that opens up a dampened tailgate. It also has uh, the clicker uh, on the key where you can open it up and lock it. But uh, the, com- the competition actually does a lot more. So Ford, <laughs> once again, that tremor out there, I keep pointing to it because it's here, has the, the built-in step. Yes. Right, where you can pull out the step and then kind of walk up it with a little handheld handhold. Uh, probably the most interesting one is a GM with their uh, Pro... Multi-Pro. Multi-Pro, right, where you yes. can either open just the top of it or you can create a step or you can put a Bluetooth... Uh, speakers in speakers there. Speakers in there. And then Ram does the uh, barn doors, yeah. the 60-40 split. Yeah. Uh, so this is just a regular old... And even even like I was looking at the, the Ford... Uh, when you open it up, when you pop pop it, right, there's like a, a can opener there. There's a place to hold your pencils or pens. There's a little measure stuff, stuff, the ruler. Yeah, th- this is just a regular old tailgate with a composite uh, bed, which is kind of cool. Yeah, so the tailgate wars, and I kind of uh, asked Mike Spears about this, the chief engineer, and he had a take on this, which said, you know, why you know, overcomplicate things, right? So that was kind of his take. Uh, why why create a tailgate that opens four different ways? 
Um, but but they added that button, right? The, the the now very interested side button to open the tailgate, and then they decided not to use steel or aluminum or any other material for the bed. It's a full composite box, basically, and no matter which bed you get, no matter which length, it's always composite, very similar to the Tacoma, what Tacoma's been doing. Yeah, it looks like there's like plastic on, instead of bed liner, it looks like it's plastic. Which is the actual bed yeah. itself. It's not a bed liner. And I didn't count, did you count like tie downs? I mean, there's always that war, how many tie downs you have, and are there those little racks <laughs> on the side where you can move them? I think all that's in there if you want it. Tundra has it. So they have at least four little D-rings, right? Yeah. And then they have the, um, the rail system, you know, where you can put more um, like cleats and other tie downs. And then on, on top of the bed, they've got this kind of camo interesting pattern, which is also then uh, reflected in the wheel well cladding uh, and other parts of plastic. Uh, so that's kind of that's kind of cool. They also, in the TRD Pro, they also did those little like yellow marker lights that say, actually I looked it up, they say TRD on them. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, Toyota's big party trick, uh, which a lot of the manufacturers don't have, is a slide down rear window. So Ram does a little tiny guy, but the, Toyota also does a little tiny guy. Depends which model you get. The, the one that slides horizontally versus all the way down vertically. Yeah, so only the crew cab, the crew max tundras have the full glass that goes down like it used to. And they kept it, they said it was obviously difficult to design, it adds some weight, right, to the truck, but they kept it. If you don't get the crew cab, if you get a double cab, which is a slightly shorter four door cab, you no longer get that full roll down window. It's a little guy that slides sideways. Yeah. So you have options there. Yeah, and the other interesting thing is like, I think all of the other manufacturers do the little window. I don't think any of them do a... Toyota's the only one that does a full slide yeah. down. And then Toyota went to a full panoramic roof. Yeah, which is uh, common this time. Yeah, which almost everybody but GM has. Now, here's a weird thing. If we're going to compare apples to apples, right? Compare the Toyota Tundra hybrid to your hybrid. Yes. Uh, they chose to put the battery under the seats, which eliminates any storage under the seat. Ford put it between the rails, I believe. In, in Underneath the truck. Yes. Yeah, where, whereas this is where we get to water fording, Andre. Are you excited? <laughs> <laughs> they put the, How many inches? <laughs> they, put, they put it up higher uh, so that it sits just below the rear seat. Once again, the problem there is you lose all storage. So if you're going to be carrying your guns, you might want to get a gun rack. But if you get a gun rack, you can't put it on the sliding down window. So I don't... I, Rifle rack, I guess. I, I don't know what you do with your rifles, your long arms. So We're in th- Texas, after all, Andre. Well, two things. Absolutely. It's a hard question. But two other things about the battery, right? It's nickel metal hydride in the Tundra. It's lithium ion in the Ford. Um, so why did they go this way? Well, they didn't really explain uh, in great detail. But um, it's air-cooled, right? So it's sitting, the battery in the Tundra is sitting in the cabin. And it has those vents, It's right? basically the battery out of the Sienna, isn't it? The, yeah, the Sienna minivan. hybrid. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's the same the, battery. The, yeah. That's what they said. So they have economy of scale. Um, it's, it's maybe a little bit more reliable and recyclable, right? Uh, they talked about the nickel metal hydride being you know, easier to recycle when the life cycle is over of that particular truck or battery. Uh, and it may be a little bit less expensive. But all the competitor trucks, you know, if you get the non-hybrid, then you will get that storage space. But all the competitor trucks have storage. And that's very useful for, like, our TRX. We store all our recovery gear in there. Uh, it's just, a, you know, it's, it's a covered space, and it's nice to have. Out of it, sight, out of mind. Because yeah. there's no other place outside of, like, the glove box or the center console where you can hide things. And certainly nothing big fits in either of those two. Well, like, you know, Ram has those Ram boxes on the side yeah. of the bed. Uh, but they're kind of the only company that does it. You know, everybody else, including Toyota. Doesn't Nissan do those now? Did they, did they copy those? But Some? they're inside the bed. Oh, they're, in, they're, they're inside, yeah, yeah. So they take up bed space. Yeah, right? they take up bed space. Now, uh, Toyota has similar type boxes that swing out. Yeah, they did these the for the Tundra. Yeah. So they did these boxes that, that are really weird looking because the uh, problem with those. So imagine like the bed and then imagine that you've got the cutouts, right, for the wheel wells. Mm-hmm. Now imagine behind the wheel wells, you've got a box that swings out. But in order to make that box as efficient as possible, you create that wheel well design within the box. So it's not a square. It's kind of it's kind of round. Semicircle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that swings out toward the tailgate and you can put stuff into it. And I was looking at that. I was thinking to myself, that's a really weird shape. Well, maybe you can put some, uh, like, a recovery rope in there. Yeah, you know? anything soft. But uh, Yeah. If you want to put, I don't know, a case of drinks, it may be, I don't know, difficult. Um, so, anyway. So, yeah. 
Underseat storage, I think, is important. And the electric trucks that are coming have front trunks or frunks, right? So that's, I think, is going to be a cool feature because you can hide things in the front. All right. Well, let's talk about the interior space. I think the interior space on all full-size trucks is pretty identical. I would You can't be like, well, one's got more, one's got less. Um, Toyota has plenty of uh, headroom unless you get the uh, sunroof which I say takes at least an inch and a half of space, but they all do that. Mm -hmm. If you don't get the sunroof, you can probably wear a full-on Texas 10-gallon hat and not have it squished. Uh, So, yeah, tons of room, headroom. uh, And I I think the interior is one of the nicest in the biz. The craziest part is in front of the passenger, right above the uh, glove box, it says Toyota. And when I say Toyota, I say that because it's in massive letters. Those letters must be at least, (laughs) what, Three inches tall. You will, yes. you will, your passenger will never forget what make of truck they are riding in. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's on the pro. Yeah, that's on the pro. And they're interesting yeah. textures now that they use yeah. uh, in their plastics. Uh, obviously, cup holders galore, uh, and then that 14-inch screen with Toyota's newest version of their infotainment, which is great because the old one was just well. I've heard the word garbage used. It was very. Um, Tommy loves it. We got into a big discussion with it. I hated it, uh, but the new one is much better. It's it's their brand new software, yeah. and the screen is very crisp. Uh, the cameras themselves are the resolution on the camera system is a little bit lower than I would so like. Let's talk about cameras. So we had a front facing camera, mm-hmm. we had a rear facing camera, and we had a bed camera, and also two, two cameras, rear view mirror, mirror camera. Cameras. So on the behind the cab, there's two cameras. One looking down into the bed so you can check the bed one looking out for the uh, rear view mirror camera and then of course underneath the two mirrors on the sides there are two cameras so you get that 360 bird's eye view if you want right so technically up to six cameras i I actually found the cameras to be uh lacking andre uh they were very uh, which way well they were just very there are two things that were very frustrating for me first the cameras kept like coming on and off randomly uh, you're talking would, about you're, you're talking about slow speed, right? Yeah. So when we came to a stop, like at the traffic light, yeah. All of a sudden, the front view comes on, which is which is not good because we had navigation going, and they're like, "Do we make a left, right, or do we keep going straight?" Because <laughs> navigation cancel, has, cancel, cancel now has gone to cameras. Yeah. So that was weird, and we couldn't find a, like a setting to turn that off. And then when we were off roading, similar thing happened, right? Uh, sometimes we wanted a camera, and then we couldn't get it to come on. So then you, ha- you have to hit the other switch, you know, the camera switch down below. And to be fair, this is a lot of pre-production stuff, so it may be sorted by the time it actually gets into full production. Uh, the other thing that I could not, and I, I asked, I think Alex from Alex Autos, or, yeah, I asked yeah. him, and he said he was able to do it. I could not, for the life of me, turn off that annoying lane keep beep, so it would tell you when you were coming up, you know, you're driving along and you kind of get close to one of the lines and it beeps at you. And but you it was more than beeping, right? It was actually correcting I you. I could turn off the correcting, okay. but I couldn't turn off the beeping. And that was super frustrating because I drove it probably 100 miles like that. And uh, yeah, sometimes you just do, you know, you just kind of get, kind of get close to the line. I don't need the beeping at me. I know where I'm driving. So Alex found out if you hold that button for lane departure warning on the steering wheel, right? Not push it, but hold it. He says it, it, it turned it off, right? That's what he said. Anyway, okay. uh, wh- what I'm getting at here is, Andre, Toyota does clearly win uh, with uh, their newest Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 now. So you get, you get uh, unlike the other manufacturers, you get cross-traffic alert standard, autonomous braking standard, uh, this lane thing that uh, I lane, hate. Lane departure thing. standard. Uh, and it comes on the loneliest, lowest model all the way up to the TRD Pro. And uh, Nissan may do that because they're also, uh, I noticed that the Japanese are competing and the Asians, right. Koreans are as well. But I know for sure that Ram doesn't do it, Ford doesn't do it, and Chevy doesn't do it. So what, what the other big three truck ma- manufacturers do, they kind of offer a couple of features and then the rest you have to buy, right? So you have to, you know, up... Um, get other packages that bring a lot of those other technologies into. But Toyota, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, all those technologies are there. You can see the radar in the front, right? So if you look at all of these Tundras, no matter how, you know, basic or complicated they are, you always see the little, at the bottom of the grill, below the emblem, there's always the little radar in the front. So uh, I think they're going to be more and more automated in the future, too. Yeah, and, you know, we've been going at this now for almost an hour. So before we wrap this podcast up, I do want you to know that 
if you want to see this stuff, we had Tundra Week this week at TFL. So just go to TFL Truck or go to tfl-studios.com and you'll see all these Tundra videos to demonstrate all this. The one thing we didn't talk about, I guess we should talk about it because it, it, it is a feature now. So Toyota has this new feature where when you're towing, uh, well, tell them about it. You, you did it. I just filmed you. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about so, the autonomous, not keeping your hands off the wheel. Yeah, yeah. So they have a couple of interesting towing features. So the first one is straight backup assist. So it's basically a similar idea to what Ford and, and Ram are doing, where basically you can turn a knob in a Ford or a Ram and it'll help you back up the trailer. Well, this is a little different. There's no knob to turn. So you're still kind of hovering your hands or you should hover your hands over the steering wheel. The steering wheel turns itself. So you point the trailer in a direction you want it to go. Let's say you're backing into a parking space. Your trailer needs to go well, let's say in the campground. Let's, let's say let's, you're doing your boat. Uh, let's say you're backing down a boat stressful. ramp. Yes. People are watching. People you know, are looking at their watches and wondering when you're going to be done. So, so you point your trailer in that direction, and then the truck does the rest. Right? So the truck will steer, and it, the system doesn't need a lot of setup. You just basically hook up the trailer, drive around, um, basically in a circle, like around the block, and it will. The camera will learn the trailer basically using the the rear camera that's looking at the tongue of the trailer. It will learn it, and then it will help you back up. But it didn't work as perfectly as I was hoping. No, it didn't. It didn't. We tr well, if you're going straight, it kind of keeps you going straight. But let's say the uh, the trailer's pointing where you want to go, but the truck is, you know, perpendicular to it or not quite. It, it, it seems to still want to steer, like, into that. You know what I'm saying? So the truck ends up not straightening itself out. And the demo we had, we, we had a very, very short trailer. They said it was a, yeah, it was a little tiny uh, Airstream. Uh, Airstream uh, base camp, yeah. uh, which is not maybe the, grass, the best demo because I know f from experience backing up short trailers, short wheelbase trailers is very hard because... You know, they just tend to like just want to go on by themselves. So that was very difficult. So I would say out of the out of the trucks, full size trucks, the best one is probably the Ram with that because it does have the little wheel where you can actually turn the wheel in the same direction that you want to go versus going, you know, the counterintuitive way, which is the way you have to do it. Uh, and unlike the Ford, you don't need stickers on the trailer uh, to actually make it work. Uh, Ram also has one of my favorite features when towing, and that is it knows the length of the trailer automatically. It uses those little sensors for blind spot monitoring, and so it automatically figures out how long your trailer is, and that's a really great function. Uh, so I, th I think Ram probably is the best one. But let's talk about the most important thing in towing, and that's weight. How much How much is it, 11, you said? 12,000. 12, and then... 12, um, with with the right configurations. Correct, in two-wheel drive, yeah. right, with, and non-hybrid. And we have towing mirrors. Towing mirrors, which are very useful, extendable, foldable electrically. The new Tundra also has two tow hull modes, and this is the first in the industry. We didn't get a chance to try all that out, uh, but they have like a light trailer tow haul mode, which is not as aggressive, and then kind of tow haul plus, they call it, uh, which is kind of aggressive tow haul mode with great shifting to help you slow down. Uh, we did not go down mountains. We couldn't find a big mountain in Texas um, just for this first drive event. So, But I want to say on paper, Ford is still has the, has the highest Right, F the highest rating. Yeah, yes. I think almost fourteen. Right, fourteen. Followed by Chevy. GM and Ram. is thirteen three. Yeah, um, and then Ram is behind there at twelve plus. I, I want to say twelve thousand, like seven hundred, and then there is now Toyota, and then Nissan mm. is be behind it. So, so yeah, they improved quite a lot on on towing and technology, and I think their interiors are really knockouts. Um, the legroom in the smaller cab was a little bit lacking. Um, maybe a little bit less than some competitors, but other than that, in the crew cab, it was great room, like we said. Um, so, so bottom line, let's kind of wrap this up. Yes. If, if you had to pick a winner, so let's talk about the trucks we talked about. The um, Now I'm talking about the off-road trucks, not the trucks in general. So if you had to, you know, like go buy, if it was your money, which, would, which of these would you go buy? And I suppose the answer is, until now, the Ford, because you did buy the Ford. Are you, are you talking about if you if you like, were to, yeah, like, like are you uh, talking about the pros or like, just like the Rebel, off-road packages? Rebel versus Pro 4X versus um, um, Trail Boss versus TRD Pro versus Tremor. So those are your five choices. Well, you know what? I I kind of like the Tremor. Uh, I haven't driven the new ZR2 Silverado, so that's we cannot talk about that. Uh, the Tremor it looks like an appealing package. 
just not because I am a Ford fanboy, but because uh, the affordable starting price about 51 for that type of truck, uh, which is a good price. And um, I like all the rest. The Trail Boss, I think, is lacking. First of all, the rear locker is not selectable. Uh, small tires. Uh, Proforex Nissan is a good truck, uh, good value, but not enough clearance. It's always kind of, you know, riding. Sometimes you hit your front skid plate quite a lot. So because of those reasons, I think, and we don't know exactly the price on the Pro, Pro yet. So it's probably the TRD Pro versus Tremor. Fair enough. For me. And I, I, I'm, I'm going to take a pass, not because I'm just trying to not make a decision, but because the off-road course that we went on was just too easy, right? There was, we did a little bit of like, there was like one uphill section and then they dug some holes where we got a tire in the air and then we went over some buried logs and then the rest was just basically a dirt road. Uh, and so I had, I have no sense for how good or bad that truck is off-road. And so I, I want to reserve judgment until actually we can take it to Moab and actually, you know, do a head to head comparison. Well, we haven't towed seriously with the truck. I mean, with, yeah. uh, we haven't done the I Gauntlet, which we will. Yeah. Uh, we, I, I was driving off road, uh, the one experience Roman is talking about. I got a good sense for the Bill Steins. It seemed like it was a good setup. Just from the first impression, 20 minute drive, it seemed like it was fairly compliant at slower speeds. And on the highway as well, it was pretty nice. So I loved the old Tundra. It was one of my favorite trucks, but in in a weird way, I would have never bought it uh, just because it was lacking in so much of the most modern, and not even most, relatively modern, right? Just simply as an off-roader, it didn't have a locking rear diff. That was just, that was an instant. Like, I, you know, if I'm seriously off-roading, I want that. Not that it necessarily needed it, but it didn't have it. So I was like, yeah, that's not on my list. Um, so now the Tundra is definitely on my list. Uh, but you're right. We got it. We got to test it. The other great thing that they improved off road was, you know, you used to have that old uh, train management system, right? Uh, Twitter calls it. What is Twitter called? Crawl control. Crawl yeah. control. That sounded like a drumming band. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's completely quiet and, and smooth. smooth and smooth and smooth too. It doesn't do that kind of herky jerky kind of like you know where you're no. kind of. Forward, back, or forward, you know what I mean? Just It's it's, it's really uh, much more modern. So, you know, I'd love to get it up one of the passes in Colorado, get it to Moab, uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, it's it's so good uh, that, you know, we're considering getting it for our long-term uh, test truck, right? We're almost done with the TRX, so we're moving on to another truck next year, uh, and this is certainly one of the ones that's on our list. Yeah, I would, I would agree because, uh, we like we said, we want to spend. I want to spend more time with it. Yeah, a lot more time. Yeah, and, and we'll 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 do a formal like presentation of what truck we're going to end up buying. So we don't want to kind of let the cat out of the bag yet. But it's certainly on our list uh, for a long term tester. We do usually one or two trucks a year, uh, and this is definitely on the list. So if that gives you any idea of how much they've improved it, I hope that helps. Yeah, and once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Um, stay tuned. Uh, TFL-studios.com. And, and all our patrons, thank you for your support. Yeah, thank you uh, for all your support. It's, it's huge. You know, every little bit helps. Well, it lets us do things like, you know, do the live show and get better equipment for it, buy uh, wireless mics, you know, buy cameras so that we have two nice cameras here in the studio. Buy these mics. Uh, yeah. Buy all these things are expensive. All this, all this <laughs> stuff we had to put up on the walls. Who would have thunk? <laughs> Little studio uh, sound insulation. Yeah. So thank you guys for your support. Uh, and remember, uh, check out Andre's hard work over at uh, tfltruck.com. But better yet, go to TFL Studios, st save it to your phone, uh, and then you'll be up on all the latest all the time. Thank you. Ciao.